Welcome to a code report video. In this video, we're going to be solving one problem in eight languages and talking about the beauty and importance of algorithms. The problem we are going to be solving today is entitled arithmetic progression. I came across it in week 351, problem two of Pearl Weekly Challenge, which was about a month ago. And I was traveling at the time, but I thought to myself, I have to make a video on this when I have the time, and now I do. So the problem is very straightforward. You're given a sequence of numbers, not necessarily integers, which you would think is not important, but it will be important when we get to the Rust solution. So it can be integers or floating point numbers, and you're asked to compute whether they can be transformed into an arithmetic progression, which is an increasing or decreasing set of numbers that basically are separated by the same uh, difference, the same amount. So there are a couple different ways you can solve this problem. The way that we are going to solve it is by sorting the numbers, computing the delta between adjacent numbers, and if all of those deltas are equal to each other, then we do have a possible arithmetic progression. So you return true or one or zero in the case of our array languages. So pretty straightforward. We're gonna look at three non-array languages first, C++, then Rust, then Python, and then we're gonna solve this problem in five different array languages. So the C++ solution is as follows. There are a number of ways that you can solve this problem. I tend towards the algorithm-based, range-based solution. So we're making use of three different algorithms slash ranges. The first one is sort, and then I have hand-rolled an all-equal function. So all equal is a algorithm that returns you true or false based on whether all of the values in your range are equal to each other. And we are passing this before we get to the implementation of all equal, the result of performing an adjacent transform. You could also spell pairwise transform if you wanted to. I prefer using the adjacent transform. Both of these showed up in C23. We are doing a binary operation, so we pass the integer template argument two and our binary operation is minus because we are getting the differences. And this is gonna give us a lazy sequence that we can then pass to all equal, and all equal is first checking whether we have an empty range. If so, it returns false. And then it's making a call to the C++20 range algorithm all of. This is not the most beautiful line of code I've ever seen. If you wanted to, you could make a call to adjacent find if you wanted to, but I prefer to do it with the all of in this instance. And we're just checking if every value is equal to the first value. So there's a little bit of redundant work because we're checking whether the first is equal to the first, but it gets the job done. And this is a somewhat nice solution in C++. Now I mentioned adjacent transform before. This is a algorithm that is known under different names in different languages. It first actually appeared in C++ and C++ 98 under the name adjacent difference. However, that is a terrible name because it encodes the semantics of the default binary operation into the name of the algorithm, which you should never do. But it's known as other things, map adjacent and Haskell, zip with next and Kotlin. And it shows up in array languages under different primitives. It's the NYS reduction in APL and friends and stencil and WeWa. And on top of this algorithm, we also have a specialization of this algorithm, which goes by deltas in Q and diff in a couple languages and libraries. Note, if you recall, we passed the binary operation std minus to the adjacent transform C++23 range. And this is the equivalent of this hard-coded deltas and diff. And you can see here that we've also included a couple expressions which we are gonna see in our array solutions. We have the two NYS reduction for APL and CAP. We don't have that in BQN, so we're gonna to have to make use of a primitive called Windows in BQN. And in WeWa, we have the beautiful stencil. When you pass it just a binary operation, it acts as our two Ys reduction. Very beautiful. Note here that if you do go 
to googletranslate.com, link in the description, and you want to play around with this, and you are wondering where the expressions are, by default, expressions and third-party libraries like NumPy are not included, so if you want to see those, you have to turn them on. Back to our C++ solution. So this is a little bit of a digression, but I was playing around with the C++ code, and I noticed, as I always do when I am making use of the C++23 print library, the generated code is always quite cumbersome. We are at 5,000, 6,000 lines for the Clang and GCC compilations respectively, and I do have this on O2. You can't really see it, it's hidden off to the side here. So I went ahead and I do what I usually do, which is I add the const expr to both of our functions here, and this doesn't change it at all, but that's because we're making use of the print library. So if we go ahead and comment out all of this, comment out all of this, and then we just return the is arithmetic progression. I'll go ahead and type this and then recompute it. You can now see that for the GCC compilation, we have compiled away everything and are just returning the result, which is what I would expect. But for the Clang compilation, we still have 122 lines of assembly which is not that bad, but when compared to essentially nothing for GCC, it is a bit concerning. So I went ahead and did the next thing to see what was going on, which is to replace your const expert with const eval. Link in the show notes if you haven't seen the superpower of C++ YouTube video that I made a while ago. Typically what this does is const eval only compiles things uh, for compile time that can be run at compile time. And so if there is some issue with your code that it can't be run at compile time, it'll flag it, whereas const expr can run both at compile time or at runtime. So the confusing thing is here is that my code is capable of running only at compile time, yet for some reason when you use const expr in the Clang uh, compilation, it doesn't go down to nothing, but when we replace our const expr's with const evals, they both go down to nothing. Anyways, I don't know why. I just thought this was curious. I thought I would go on a little digression in this video. If anybody knows why, feel free to leave a comment in the section down below. If not, maybe someone like Jason Turner, if this video ever goes past his radar, he'll make a C++ weekly video and answer what's going on here. Anyways, that's the C++ solution. Let's hop back and take a look at our Rust solution. So this is the Rust solution that I came up with. In some ways, nicer than the C++ solution. In other ways, much worse. The much worse part is that we don't have the type deduction and type inference capabilities that C++ has. So with the concepts in C++, you can use the auto keyword to deduce a lot of stuff that needs to be spelled out literally in Rust. So all of the type trait t colon copy plus partial ord plus std colon colon ops colon colon blah blah blah, which I really don't care about. I'm just trying to code up a simple solution to this problem. You have to go ahead and type out explicitly, but uh, C++ in that regard, uh, a little bit nicer. Rust is nicer in the sense that you can do this method chaining, nums.iter.copy.sortedby.tuplewindows.map. We don't exactly have all of the operations that we would like. We don't have a map adjacent or an adjacent transform, so we have to make a call to both tuple windows and then dot map. So it's two different operations to do what we could do with one in C++. The other very irritating thing, so you might be thinking, why are we not just making use of the iter tools sorted? How come we're making use of the sorted by? And that is because across our test case, as I mentioned before, we have both integers and floating point numbers. And floating point numbers do not satisfy the ORD trait, O-R-D, that is required by sorted. So you cannot use sorted if you have potentially floating point numbers that are gonna be in your uh, test cases. Therefore, we have to make a call to sorted by and then use the partial compare dot unwrap. Very ugly. I guess it's necessary for safety. Like I said, folks, I was just trying to solve this problem beautifully and quickly in Rust and C++. Anyways, that is the Rust solution. If you've got a better Rust solution, I'm not a Rust expert, there is a GitHub repository. You can either leave it in the comments down below, but you can also go and open a pull request on the GitHub repo that is backing 
the solutions that I created for this YouTube video. Last but not least for the non-array languages is Python. And here we have what I would argue is the nicest of the solutions that are non-array, but still leaving a lot uh, to be desired. We're calling our sort method on nums to sort the numbers. And then we are using the for AB iterable unpacking zip tail trick. You could have used pairwise, but I decided not to import iter tools in order to get access to pairwise. And from here, you can basically pass all of this to a set, which is going to collapse it to the unique values. And if the length of that set is equal to one, then we know that we have an arithmetic progression. So three different solutions in our non-array languages. All of them leave something to be desired. We do not have access to the three different algorithms really that we would like all equal map adjacent and sort across these three languages. But let us skip to the best of our array languages. We're going to go from best to worst. So next up is Wiwa. So here we are in our Wiwa pad. And the first thing we're going to do is sort. We've got the nice keyword to symbol mapping. So you don't need to memorize any shortcuts. Then we want to do our deltas, which is a minus map adjacent. And as I mentioned in the Google Translate overview of deltas, we can make a call to stencil and a binary operation. And this is going to give us our deltas. So beautiful. It's the only array language that in two characters, you can get access to deltas. Very beautiful, folks. And then there are a couple different things we can do. My preferred way to solve this is to do another stencil and then an equals, which is going to ask us, are all of our adjacent values equal to each other? And then from here, we can just do a and reduction or a min reduction. And if this returns us true, it means that all of the deltas are equal to each other. So that is one way to solve this. Another way to solve this is to do the Python pattern of basically deduplicating all of our values and then checking the length. So we have a function called dedupe. We can then get the length of it and then check, is this equal to one? And that is our second WeWa solution. Like I said, folks, it's downhill from here. And this is one of the reasons I wanted to make this video because usually I'm just gushing about array languages, but the key here is that you want access to primitives that enable you to solve your problems in the vocabulary that you want. So cap is going to be quite nice. It is just going to be a tiny bit more verbose because we do not have access to stencils. So we need to make use of our two wise reduction. So first up is our sort function. Luckily, cap has sort. You got to love it, folks. And then we want to do our two wise reduction. So just to demonstrate what we're doing here, this is our catenate function or our pair function, if you will. And you can see that when we do a two-wise reduction, it is just bundling these together. But we can replace this with any binary operation. So in this case, we're going to replace it with a minus to get the differences. And then if we want to follow the first we will solution, we can do another two-wise reduction with equals to check whether they are equal to each other. And then we can do an and reduction. And this is going to be our solution. And we can parenthesize this to show you that because we don't have the three trains in cap. We just have two trains and left bound functions. We don't have to do anything in order to make this solution tacit, which is another very beautiful thing about cap folks. And if we want to do the second solution, we can do the unique values of the deltas. We can check if this is going to be a length of one and then just check to see is this equal to one. So two still very beautiful solutions in cap but just one character longer because we do not have stencil. We have to make use of our two wise reduction. Next up is dialog APL. So here we are in our ride editor. I've already typed out sort because even though we have behind in dialog 20, we do not have a sort primitive yet. We got to get sort folks. Look at this compared to the cap and the wee sorts. This is egregious. Say la vie. Next thing we need to do is a two minus reduction. After that, we can do a two equals reduction. And after that, we can do an and reduction. And magically, even though we have three trains, this is a valid tacit expression because we have a unary function here, followed by a binary function. So this is an AGH fork. This is an AGH fork. And then we have one unary function after two, three trains. So this will work. And we are going to skip the second dialog APL solution for the sake of time, and then we will go to BQM. 
So BQN might be the most disappointing of all because I love it the most, yet it is the worst. Because we do not have our two wise reduction or a stencil, we have to make use of windows. And then from windows, we're gonna do a minus reduction over the rows of our matrix that is the result of our windows. And then we have our deltas. From here, we can do one of a couple things. We could copy this if we wanted, and I believe put this here, replace this with our equals, and then we have to do our and reduction, which is gonna look as follows, but we need to put a nothing in there. So this is our first BQN solution, and it's not too much better, folks, if we do the deduplication. So there's our deduplication, we need another nothing, then we need a length, then we need another nothing, then we need our one equals. It's better, but compared to CAP, compared to WIWA, it's pretty bad, folks. We've got no stencil or map adjacent or NYS reduction, and it hurts, it hurts, folks. Moving on, last but not least is our Jello solution. So here we are in Jello. For those that need a reminder, I did a number of live streams a year ago, months ago, that was creating this tool to help understand the esoteric code golfing language, Jelly. So Jello is a keywordified Jelly. This is the Jello expression and it's converted into Jelly underneath. So I is short for identity, but the other ones are keywords. So if we do sort, you can see we can just call this, and that maps to the S underdot. Next thing we want is deltas, which we can see is right here. And then after that, we want our all equal, which is right here. So in Jello, it's sort deltas all eek, but in Jelly, it's S underdot I E. So we have all three of the algorithms that we need exactly. The specializations, fantastic folks. It's absolutely beautiful. B combinators twice in a row. It's a one, one, one monadic chain. What more could you want? It's the epitome of solving this problem, folks. Jello and jelly for the win, which brings us to the conclusion of this video. The title is The Beauty of Algorithms, and that's the whole point, folks. Even though I love array languages. We don't always have the primitives and the algorithms that we want. In WIWA, we have almost three for three. We've got sort, we've got stencil, which I qualify because map adjacent is the generic version of deltas. Stencil is the equivalent, so we get a green checkbox. And we don't have all equal, but we can spell it in four characters two different ways. I'm showing the shortest solutions of all of our array languages. Link in the description to the GitHub repo that has all the solutions. In cap, we also have sort. We've got the two wise reduction, which I count as a green checkbox. Once again, though, we don't exactly have all equal, but we can spell it in four primitives. That gets a yellow circle. However, we get to APL. There's no sort. You get a red, no entry there. Two wise reductions for our deltas. That gets a green check mark. And once again, we don't really have an all equal, but you can spell it in a few characters, so it gets a yellow circle. BQN, it's got no deltas, no stencil, no NYS reduction, therefore you get a no entry sign, folks. It does have the sort, though, and you can spell all equal in only a couple characters. But Jello, the best of all, folks, all three algorithms. That's the beauty of algorithms, folks. When you have them, you're basically not even coding. You're just composing with the vocabulary that you desire. I don't wanna have to spell minus reduce cells to windows when all I want is deltas or a stencil minus or a adjacent transform minus. I wanna reach for the vocabulary when I have it and just code that way. And really, we've got Jello here, but we don't have Jelly, which should be at the top. So here's a full comparison of all eight languages, technically nine if you include Jelly, and the Jelly solution is number one. Three primitives. It looks weird because we've got the S underdot, but it's got access to a sort, access to deltas, and access to all equal. For C++, Rust, and Python, these actually all, none of them get a uh, no entry sign. They get green check marks when they have it exactly, and yellow check marks when you're able to express it. So, you know, C++ didn't have all equal, but it does have all of, which you can use to express that sentiment. Same thing with Rust and with Python. Know your algorithms, folks, and reach for them when you have them. And when you don't, hopefully you have one that can enable you to express it 
If you have alternative solutions in any of the languages that I showed in this video or in languages that I did not show in this video, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below. Or as I mentioned earlier in the video, you can open up a PR on the GitHub repo and I will be happy to accept those solutions. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something and have a great day.